Hi FlossTube, I'm Pam. Welcome to my channel, Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. Today is Wednesday, March 29th, and this is FlossTube number 84. Welcome! If you are finding my channel for the first time, this is a place where I talk about um, what I've been stitching, life updates, shop updates. I own a cross-stitch store in Massachusetts called Stitch New England, and um, also where I talk about my backyard bird updates. Um, did I say what I've been stitching? It's mostly a channel about cross stitch with a little bit of a little bit of sprinkles of birds and long rambly side chats. Okay, if you're coming back, <laughs> if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. Welcome back. It's been a while. Um, I I'm using the uh, 2023 book of days this year to kind of keep track of my stitching and my floss tubes and I have not filmed a floss tube it's been a month since a little over a month I haven't filmed since February 24th um in my defense though not that I need to defend my lack of filming market happened in between and we'll we'll chat about market um the Nashville needlework market that like took a lot of my time um Anyway, here's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to do a little bit of life update, market recap. Um, don't expect any pictures or video from market because I'm just bad at that. I'm bad. And it requires editing, which I try to avoid at all costs. Um, we're going to talk about what I've been stitching. We're going to do a little bird. Actually, it's a, a little bit of a longer bird update today because it's starting to be like spring and there's a lot of bird chat and a lot of bird chatter happening in my backyard. Um, we're gonna talk about, I have a little bit of giveaway to do, and then we're gonna do a shop update, and then we'll talk about plans. I have notes. Okay, life update. We went to market. Um, this was our second time going to market. If you are finding crop stitch for the first time, um, the Nashville Needlework Market happens the first weekend of spring every year, down in Nashville. Well, technically in Franklin, just outside of Nashville. And it's basically like a big market trade show situation in which designers and, oh, the heat turned off, designers and makers and dyers and like all set up at the, at the hotel, set up a hotel, like with a courtyard in the middle. So they all have rooms and then the shop owners go and we shop and then bring things back to our stores, whether they be brick and mortar or online. Um, it's a thing. It happens. So um, we decided to go down to Tennessee a couple days early this year uh, because last year we went and then everybody's like, oh, did you like Nashville? And my husband and I are like, we never left the hotel that market happens at. So this year we drove down a couple days early. My husband wanted to see the Jack Daniels distillery. So we did a night in Lynchburg. We did like a Airbnb situation in Lynchburg. And that was, the Jack Daniels distillery was fun. It was a nice little tour. Um, but because of like our driving in, we got there late. Our tour was one of the last ones of the day. And everything in Lynchburg shuts down at like five or six o'clock. So by the time we got out of our tour, there was like nowhere to eat. So we had to drive down these like windy back roads with cows, a lot of cows and farms to, to get to a pizza place that was 30 minutes away, which was fine. Pizza was lovely. And then we drove back to our Airbnb, which was like right in the center of Flinch Park. And um, it, it was dark and it was scary. And there were still like, there was no lights. It, it was the thing. And then that night it was, we had a crazy thunderstorm with tornado watch, which from somebody who's up in New England is quite frightening. I don't, I don't understand how you all who live down there with the tornadoes deal with it because it was quite frightening. Um, and then the next day we drove to Nashville. <laughs> so 
Nashville was very fun. We did, you know, we we did a tour of a mansion. We visited the Johnny Cash Museum. You know, we spent some time in bars listening to music and drinking whiskey. Like, I guess that's what one does in Nashville. So that's what we did. We had a good time. And then we went to Market. And Market was busy and it was fantastic meeting up with old friends and um, making new friends. My favorite thing about Market is there are very few opportunities in the world of cross-stitch commerce in which shop owners can get together and chat with each other. Like, you know, as stitchers, we go to retreats and, and that and we chat with other stitchers, but it's not very often that shop owners get to chat with other shop owners for extended periods of time. So that might be my favorite thing about Market. Um, it was just nice, it was nice. It's so busy, it's so much work. Everybody always asks, did you have fun at Market? I mean, I, I had fun at Market, but mostly I had work. <laughs> mostly it's just a lot of work. Um, Ooh, the nice other nice thing about going down to Tennessee the first weekend of March from someone who lives up in, you know, I've now decided, sorry, sorry, side story. I swear we will talk about stitching at some point. Um, I live in Rhode Island, but I grew up in Massachusetts and my shop is in the town I grew up in. And I always feel weird, like, where am I from? Am I from Rhode Island? I mean, technically my house is in Rhode Island, but I could walk to Massachusetts from my house. It would take me 10 minutes. Um, or am I from Massachusetts? Like, I've decided what I am is a, hold on, I gotta think about this. I'm from Rochusets. Rochusets. I'm a Rochusetsian. Rochusetter. A Rochusetter. I'm really from both. So when you're from up here and you go down to Tennessee the first weekend in March and we drive, as you're driving, you hit this spot where all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, there's daffodils and the grass is green and there's buds on the trees. And like you get a spring earlier than you would get here. Here, the first weekend of March, it still pretty much looks like winter. And in Tennessee, it looks like spring and the trees are flowering. There's flowers everywhere. The grass is green. It's warm. It's lovely. There's crazy thunderstorms. Um, and then you drive back <laughs> and you're in winter again. But then in a few weeks, that stuff starts happening here. Like just this week, all of a sudden, the hyacinths are popping up in my yard. The daffodils are up in my yard. Nothing. We have no leaves on trees yet. Um, the trees are not flowering. But the bulbs are, the early spring bulbs are up and they're flowering. The grass is just starting to get a little green. So it's like, this is the best part. It's like I'm getting two springs. It's fantastic. Um, I don't really know what else to say about market. I came back with a lot of stuff. I came back with a lot of stuff. I've already sold out of some of the things I came back with and I'm having to do my second orders. I came back with a ton of fabric, which I haven't had a chance to photograph. <laughs> So some of it's on the website, some of it, all of it's on the website, but some of it doesn't have pictures yet. It just, it is what it is. It just takes forever. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it for me for life updates. I will say I got all, like in the time before market, like leading up to market and then while you're at market, I had like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like 10 days of no stitching. So one of the, uh, one of the other reasons I didn't film a floss tube um, is that I honestly for a while didn't have anything to show since my last floss tube because it was a few, like a week and a half by the time I started stitching again. And then I had to stitch on a few things because I didn't want to just show you one thing. Anyway, let's talk about what I have been stitching now that we're nine and a half minutes into the video. Um, let me just flip over my pile. So, of course I stitched on my shop project. So this year at the shop, anytime I have a chance to stitch, I am working on Cottage Garden Samplings, the Snowman Collector Series. I am currently working on the second one, which is the clown. I'm sorry if you don't like clowns. Um, I'm stitching it on 20 count Ada. 
I did actually bring this with me to market. I was like, I can just do the white fill in. I think I got 10 stitches in on the trip and that was it. I'm not even counting that as stitching. So here's where it's at. I have all of the first one done except for the, I, I have a bunch of white I still have to stitch that I'm kind of leaving open for retreat stitching. And then here's where I am on the clown. I have decided that, can we just show, look at the little trapeze artists. They're so cute. And there's a seal on his head. I've named him Pipsqueak. And I've decided to, let me get out the picture again. I just recently made this decision. I am not gonna stitch his crazy hair. I think his head is a lot cuter just as a round head. Um, seriously, look at his little, look at his little bow tie. He's so cute. I know everybody does not like this clown. He's my favorite one so far. Um, anyway, back to his hair. It looks like fire wings coming out of his head. And I think it's one of the things that kind of makes him a little creepy. So I'm going to leave that out. He's so cute. He's so cute. I can't wait to get to the lion. Look at him. Cannot wait. So working on that at the shop, I'm actually going to work on that tonight because it is Wednesday night stitching group. Um, yeah. And then the other ongoing thing I have is my daily temperature stitch along. This year I am doing the temperature calendar by Zara. Every, every video, I never remember who, who the name of this is. Anyway, here is where I am at. So every, I do this every Sunday, I catch up on the whole week. Each block is the high temp of the day. So I now have February done and I'm working on March. I do have the whole outline of the border done. I've started working on the key in the middle. Um, the 2023 I did in like a sparkly etoile. You're probably, oh, you can see it sparkle a little. I haven't decided what I want the, the numbers, what color I want them to be at. Um, yeah. So my next plan with this, uh, other than like stitching the block, the blocks every week, is I want to get all of the calendar, the monthly, I want to get all of the, all of these like gray blocks done. Um, before June, before my pool opens. Because once my pool opens, I plan on spending most of my Sundays sitting out by the pool and not stitching. So I just wanna be able to do the seven blocks of the week and not have to worry about doing any more of the frame of the piece. Okay. And then I had a new start. Can I show off this bag for a sec? So my friend, Tracy, um, she's OG Stitchery on Instagram and on FlossTube. I will link her below. Is making project bags. Super cute. Look at, look at the little pole with the bee. It's adorable. So I have two of her bags now. I believe that she's selling them on Instagram. I have a few of them in the shop for sale. I just didn't think to bring them over. Next video. Next video if I still have them. Um, so new start. I don't have a picture of that. Let me see if I can show. So that's what it's gonna look like. It says, special notice, the attention of clerks is directed to the importance of suggesting to customers that before beginning a piece of work, a fully sufficient amount of silk be procured as afterwards difficulty may be experienced in obtaining exactly the same shade. I am going to change the word silk to floss. Um, this is by Erica Michaels. And I just had a small start. I decided not to do it in green. I'm doing it in blue because sti my Stitch New England colors are blue. Um, and that's where I'm at. <laughs> what is that? The word the? I'm thinking, I'm wondering if on my Wednesday stitchy groups, if I get like one length of floss in before I start working on my snowman every time, if it'll just move along pretty quickly. Words are fast. 
So it would be nice to get that done and hanging up in the shop because I think it's funny. Okay, then let me look at my calendar. Then I worked on, oh, it was Hawkrun Hollow Zoom. I host a Hawkrun Hollow Zoom call every month um, for anybody searching Hawkrun Hollows. It's currently closed. It may open back up soon. I'm still trying to work work that out. But anyway, I'm currently working on a year of Hawkrun Hollow by Caratow Samplings. Um, I did have a chance to ask Kathy Barrick and Marty Barrick at Market where Hawkrun Hollow is. Like, I know it's a fictional place, but like, where did they picture it in their head? Um, and I, th I believe that Kathy Barrick said like maybe somewhere in Pennsylvania. And I'm like, but then there's shores. It throws the whole thing off. But maybe the folks at Hawkrun Hollow like go and visit the ocean and that's where Shores of Hawkorn Hollow comes from. I don't know. It's a fictional place. Anyway. I was working on the April block. I am excited to say that I finished it. Ooh, which bring oh, okay. I meant the first thing I meant to show was my I, I did I FFO'd something. We'll show it after. Okay. So April block. I'm stitching this on. 40 count. I just realized that I didn't say what I was just from my other things on next time. Um, 40 count linen, one strand over two. And so I have January, February, March done, June done, May done, and now April done. Can we just get that April block up close? So as just like the other blocks, I did some color changing. The umbrellas were gonna be like dark brown and like a rusty red color. And I was like, they're spring umbrellas. So I made them blue and yellow. Look at the little bunnies. So cute. This is one of my favorite. I, of course I like stitching houses. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, here's where I'm at. So I have one, my goal is to get three blocks done this year. April is the first block I got finished. So I'm gonna work on July and August this year. And then I'll just have that row at the bottom to do next year and then it will be done. So originally it was gonna be one block a month back in 2020. And I got halfway through March and then we all know what happened in March of 2020. And I didn't wanna stitch on it anymore. So my one year, project has become a five-year project and I'm okay with that. So I will start the August block. The August one is this one right here. So that's what I'm going to work on next and it will get started next week. Next week. The week after. It'll get started the week after on the next Zoom call. And then I'm hoping to have that block done by um, somewhere in the middle of the summer. I, I don't think I'm gonna have it done by the first day of summer, um, but maybe, maybe by August, I would like to have that block done. Um, and then I worked on that for quite some time. Oh, let me show my FFO before I forget. I know I said I'm just gonna forget. So, I stitched Big Hearted Tiny Town by Heart and Hand last year. And then it's been just waiting to be FFO'd like most things. And my friend Amy, who is Gable Stitcher on Instagram and FlossTube, also stitched Big Hearted Tiny Town and we decided to finish ours together. So she came to the shop yesterday with all her supplies and a good tutorial and we both did our first drum finishes. I am so proud of myself. You have no idea. I stuck some like Jabco Valentine pins in there. Like this is my finish. This seam right here, eh. I, and some of my stitches along the top could have been better. But it was my first time. So bottom fabric, top fabric are the same. And here's my drum. 
I can't, like it's, this, I'm so proud of myself. I am not crafty. I hate FFOing. I especially hate FFOing smalls because again, I'm not crafty. It took us four hours in the shop, but it's done and it's so good. It's so good. I keep looking, I'm, I, before I also forget, this hangs in the shop. Um, it is not originally charted to say Stitch New England. It, there's like other like New England things up there. But my friend Dom Marie stitched this for me and my friend Anna recharted it to say Stitch New England. And I love it. And so I wanted to show it off to you today. Um, the chart is called Let's Visit New England. It's by Imaginating. The designer is Ursula Michaels. She's like a whole series of these, like, let's visit whatever. This one's New England. It's so good. It's so good. I am now in love with drums. I want to do all the drums. I just, can we just, I just want to, can, can the rest of the video be me showing off my drum? Okay, no, we're going to move on to more stitching. So, then out came Sir Thomas by Glendon Place. Where is the chart? It is going to look like this whenever it gets done. Who knows? I'm stitching it on 28 count antique white linen with the called for um, DMC and Rainbow Gallery and where are we? So I didn't work on any turkey when it was out. I finished this corn corner, Cor corn corner with the wheat. I mean, it's not technically fully finished. There's beads and stuff that go in there, but the beads will be last. So here's where he's at. I figure I'll try to get a corner done like every other time it comes out because I hate repetitive stitching. So I've done one corner and one corner was fun, but now I've got to do three other corners, which is not as fun to me. That is one of my favorite things to stitch on though. It's like crazy fun, crazy fun. And then, and then I had another new start. So I am going to, I don't know if I should show this or not. I'm going to stitch con. Weekend B, if you're also going to StitchCon. Um, and I'm going to do the Smalls Exchange. Do I show my small for the Smalls Exchange or do I not show my small for the Smalls Exchange? I'm not gonna show it. I will show it, I will take a little video of it when I have fully finished it and StitchCon has happened. And then I will, I, you know I hate editing, but I will edit it in at that point. So in June. I'll show that one in June. Oh no, my needle is coming out of Sir Thomas. All right, so sorry to tease you. I never know, do, you sh do I show my smalls that are going to be surprises w while I'm stitching them? I'm deciding no. So then it came time, the next project that came out, because I am, this year I'm going through all my whips in order of start date. And then I have to touch them at least once and then I can stitch on them for as long as I want after that. So sometimes it's just the one day, sometimes it's several days. This one got several days of work in. It's the Christmas Bells Sampler by Heartstring Samplery. Um, it is charted to be stitched in Gloriana. And I did a conversion of mine to, um, I think I did all classic color works. There might be one week dye works in there into just regular like cotton over dyes. And here is where we're at. So I worked this border over here while I had it out and I did some more of the words and that's where I'm leaving it for now. Um, oh my God, I love it. Look, I love it. It's a good one. I do wish if I could go, if I 
were to restart it, I do wish I had done the bells in a twill and gave them a little sparkle, but it's gonna be stunning when it's done. So sometimes you have to like not overthink it. I know that's not easy, but good enough. I live strongly in the land of good enough. It's in the like northeast corner of Rochusets. Good enough. And then lastly, the last thing I have stitched on is June Bug by Nora Corbett. Um, because I also host a fancy folk zoom the fourth Thursday of every month. And I, so I'm currently working on June Bug. And I am so close to a finish. Sorry, there is like string, string, floss everywhere. Side story. So last night, my middle guy, he's 22, says to me, I put my next dentist appointment card under your yogurt jar with your floss in it. And I had to make him repeat it like three times because I was absolutely flabbergasted that he called it floss and not like thread or string or whatever, that that my 22 year old knew that my cross stitch thread was called floss. I, I felt like I needed, it was a proud, proud, proud mom moment. Anyway, June bug, so close. Oh my gosh, so close. So my plan, I am pushing for a finish on this. I'm already talking about plans. My plan is to have this finished before my next Fancy Folk Zoom. So it's like the only thing I'm working on at home right now. Um, this is empty because it's getting filled in with Krynik and I needed to grab that from the store the other day. So that'll be the next thing I'm working on is filling that in with Krynik. Um, I have a little bit of work I've got to do up here and then I have her whole head to do. So I haven't done her head or like the little horns that come out of her head. So a little bit, so her head and horns, a little bit of crinic fill in and then beads and she's done. Oh my gosh. I did, there, I did a mistake up here on her sleeves. Her sleeves are supposed to be all tan and brown and I accidentally put that like teal color up in there and I'm leaving it. She's lovely, just the way she is. Oh my gosh, so close. So by the fourth Thursday in April, this will be done. I'm hoping she's done within the next week or two. Although I realized I'd sold out of the beads I need for her at the store. So now I'm having to wait for more beads. So that might hold me up a little bit. And that was it, that was my stitching this week. Well, that was actually like four weeks of stitching. Um, that, can we just, so good. Okay, bird update. So my other hobby is my bird feeders in the backyard. Um, I love, I love my backyard birds. So a few things I wanted to update you about what's going on back there. Um, obviously we're at the end of March. It's going to be April 1st on Saturday. Um, how did that happen? I'm not sure. And the spring songs are starting out there. And a few weeks ago, I made a note of this on March 13th to be exact, I was in my backyard and I was like, what is that song? And it's one that I, I don't, I did, didn't think I'd ever heard before. So I get out my phone and I have an app on my phone called Merlin. If you're into birds, get this app. It's by the Cornell Ornithology Lab. And you can identify birds by their song using it. So I get out there and I'm identifying it. And it comes up as a red-winged blackbird. And then I noticed that you know, I clicked some things that on that sa same day, literally like March 13th in 2022, I had identified the same bird through song. So it must be the day that the red winged blackbirds, I don't know if I said that already, it was a red winged blackbird comes back into my area. So, and I, and I, and I know for those of you who know red winged blackbirds are like, how do you not know the red winged blackbird? blackbird call like it's iconic um 
but it's not their normal song. What I hear, it's something different. It's not like that trill with that. Anyway, it's a red-winged blackbird and they're back. So they're back in my backyard. Um, and then a week later, the grackles came back. And I love the grackles because they're funny to watch walk. And I like how sleek they are. I like black birds. Um, but they get aggressive at the feeders and yeah, anyway. So they're back. The juncos are still here. They haven't left yet. So I have that mix of like warm weather birds are starting to come in, but my cold weather birds haven't left yet. And the goldfinches have started going yellow. Like just this week, all of a sudden they're yellow or they're somewhere in between. They're looking, some of them are looking a little rough while they're doing their molt. Um, but they're so cute. So that's what's happening at my feeder right now. I am a few things like with my feeding station, I have this like station from Wild Birds Unlimited and it has four hooks. And this year I'm trying to make it a small bird station. I did go out and get a new feeder that deters the bigger birds like the starlings and the grackles from eating at it because when they sit on it, it drops the, it like closes the feeding stage anyway hopefully they get discouraged and I will feed them somewhere else in my yard but I'm trying to keep my main station to be like little bird friendly it will have my jelly feeders though I'm getting so excited for my Orioles to come back and I had to like I posted a short video on my on this channel last year when they came back and so I went and looked at it to see like when did that happen and I'm like the leaves were like fully leafed out they don't come back when the leaves are bare, when the trees are bare. So it's May, I have to wait till May for my Orioles, but I'm so excited. Anyway, that's it for my bird update. That brings us to giveaway. So last video, a million years ago, I was giving away Goth Moth by Satsuma Street because I had finished it. And so I was giving away my chart kind of past the stash with the leftover floss and beads and sequins and stuff that I had for it. And I asked everyone to use the word goth if they wanted to win it. And um, Allison Norris won. Yay, Allison Norris. So I will get that out in the mail to you because I have your address. And we're gonna do a giveaway this week for, or this video because I can't promise I will film again next week. Um, when I was at Market, um, Heartstring Samplery was sharing a room with a company I hadn't seen before called Posey, um, it's a long name actually, Posey Patterns and Kits to Stitch. And I absolutely fell in love, fell in love. So I'm gonna give away one of their charts. If you wanna see the rest, I have them on the website. If you go under the um, Market section of the website, you can see them all under Posey and I'm gonna give away this one. So this one is called the Stitchers RSVP. Can, can you even? It says, listen, I still wanna be invited, but I'm not coming. I love that. So I'm gonna give that one away. If you would like a chance to win this chart, a few things. Um, you have to have filled out my happy mail form. I am never gonna ask you like if you win, I'm never gonna like chase you down and ask you for an email address or any other information. I only ever look at the happy mail form. So if you haven't filled it out, I will move on to another winner. Um, also know that in case anybody contacts you saying they're me and you've won one of my giveaways, I'm never gonna contact you to tell you you've won one of my giveaways. If I will just send you your win because you will have filled out the happy mail form. Does that make sense? Um, so you have to have filled out the happy mail form. To fill out the happy mail form, you must be 18, which means you must be 18 to win. Use the word RSVP. I guess those are letters. Use the letters RSVP in your comment below in order to be entered to win. Do not use any words like enter, giveaway, win, any of those words. I will delete your comment if I notice it. Um, that's it. Good luck. I, lo I love her stuff. Um, and then shop. Oh, I wanted to show my favorite patterns from Market. 
well, this will be included under shop update. These are actually not patterns for market, but they're the new um, with a needle and thread patterns. I'm not going to show them all, but these were some of my favorites. Um, this one is called the robins. Oh, the robins are here. That's the other bird that has showed back up. They actually showed up slightly before the black, the red winged blackbirds. It's like Mr. and Mrs. Robin. They're so cute. Spring awakens. Got like Mr. 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 and Mrs. Cottontail. And they're pulling a little robin in their wagon. So now I've got to tell like a story. Like maybe they were on a walk and they found a baby robin and they were like, oh my God, where's your mom? And their mom wasn't, and his mom wasn't there. So then they put it in the wagon and now they've adopted it and they're best friends. And yeah, they have to feed it worms and they're not super happy about that, but the robin won't eat the carrots. Okay. And then lastly, my home sweet home. I'm not super into patriotic stitching, but I really, there's something about this one. Also the Robin. I like it. I kind of like, I think what it is that I like is that the flag kind of overlaps onto the house a little bit. And creates like a little bit of depth. I like it. Okay. So those are the new with the needles. And then these are my favorite things for market. So because I'm all about the drums right now, I've got a few things to show you. October House Fiber Art. I love these little rows that they do. They have one called Tomato Row, which was not a market release. I think it came out at Expo, maybe. So this one is the Itch to Stitch. And they're finished just like these little pillows. And this one is called Snip Snip. And when I saw them at market, they're small. They're like teeny tiny. But I thought, wouldn't they be absolutely adorable as teeny tiny little drums? Like, these are perfect for a miniature drum finish. Oh my God, I'm in love. I, I love the idea of drums now. So then also Stacey Nash had quite a few drums for market releases, but I especially like this one because I really like White Houses. This one is called Faded Garden Pin Keep Drum and Needle Keep. I'll show you the back of the drum. Like I might have to stitch this. I don't know what it is about white houses. I don't live in a white house. I did grow up in like a colonial, but it wasn't white. I don't know what it is about white houses. I love them. And then this one I loved when it was still like a pre-order. Went to market. It's lovely. It's still one of my favorite things from market. Nature by Teresa Kogut. It's those funky birds. I love them. I wonder if I could stitch just the funky birds and turn them into a drum. I'm all about the drums. Hmm. I didn't think on that. Okay. And then lastly, this, the finishes for this in person at market were some of my favorite things. So this is the Between Friends book, um, a spring sampling by Summer House Stitchworks and Hands-On Design. This in person, in love, in love. Love that little needle book, love that. I'm not really a score new person. Of course, I haven't tried one yet. There were a couple of other things in here that I'm not gonna show because I'm thinking about doing them as gifts for people and I'm totally in love. Love this book. I gotta keep one for me. Um, what else do I wanna talk about? Oh, shop update stuff. Starting this weekend, I'm moving from every first, so we used to do stitching groups here on Saturdays, every first and third Saturday, and you had to sign up in, for, in advance and all that jazz. Starting this weekend, it's every Saturday, 10 to four, you don't have to sign up in advance, you just come in with your stitching. Um, retreat update. We still have a few dozen spots, not, not terribly many, but a couple dozen um, spots left for openings for the retreat. But I will say we are like, we're like this for, for we're gonna be, we're gonna have filled up the whole hotel with just, with just us. Um, if our hotel fills up, I will, I can't think of the word I want compile thank you 
compile a list of there. I mean, there's tons of hotels close by. I'll compile a list of other hotels. Um, but yeah, we're super close to filling up our hotel, not, not just our hotel block, but the entire hotel. Um, but there are, there's still a, a, like, a, I don't know, two or three dozen spots left. Three dozen, three dozen spots left for the retreat. So you have not missed out yet. Um, I will be vending at Celebration of Needlework that happens in Nashua, New Hampshire, May 17th to the 21st, May 18th to the 21st. I don't remember the exact dates, but that 17th, 18th-ish to the 21st, if you are local and you're like, I've never heard of Celebration, Google Celebration of Needlework. I'll put the, the link to the website in the description box below, below. Um, so I'm going to be vending at that. A little nervous. It'll be my first time vending somewhere, but super excited too. I think it's going to be a really great celebration this year. Um, I think that's it. Plans. Getting super excited for StitchCon. Again, Weekend B, I will be there. There are like six of us from the area that are driving together to StitchCon. So kind of like a girl's road trip fun kind of fun um so my plans are i'm stitching some i'm doing the smalls exchange for that so i gotta get that stitched up and fully finished and i want to finish june bug i mean those are really my main plans and just keep going through my whip progression and it doing the rotation so um i think that's it we're like 40 minutes in not not bad for timing considering it's been a month um I'm sure I'm forgetting to talk about something because it's inevitable. All right, I think that's it. Hopefully you do not have to wait another month before we chat again. I apologize if that's the case. Um, just time. It's, ideally I'd like to be able to film every week, but I have a brick and mortar shop as well as an online shop and my husband is helpful, but 95% of the stuff that has to happen is done by me. So it is what it is. I don't have tons of extra time. And the extra time I do have, I kind of want to spend it stitching. So hopefully it won't be another month, but it might be. Fair warning. All right. In the meantime, I hope that you are all safe and healthy and happy and that you're getting tons of stitching time in. And um, I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.